So what is going on dammers, my name is Mayhul and welcome to your 14th Angular 6 tutorial in which we're gonna discuss about something you will usually and always need when you are not building single page applications with Angular which would be the case almost every time. That is routing. So let's get started. Alright, so in this video, we're going to take a look at what routing is, why you would need routing really quick and implementing routing finally from scratch. So what is routing? Displaying different content on different pages is routing. You can split up your content on different pages. For example, if you want to show some things for authenticated people and some things to unauthenticated people, you can do that with routing. You can um, do a lot of other stuff. For example, if your website contains a lot of stuff, then you can split that stuff. You know about pagination, right? If you have ever read any blogs which has a lot of posts, then they show these numbers. So that can be performed with routing. That is one example of routing. Routing is everywhere on the internet. So um, let's just implement this router module really quick. So to implement this, what, what we have is that let's just create two components really quick. So we would create two components here and let's just create a component NGGC, a shortcut to create a component. And let's just say this is my home. So I have a home component ready with me in a few seconds. And there we are. And I would need another component. Um, that would be NGGC data. Right. So we have our home component and we have our data component. And what I want is that I, our application starts from app component it bootstraps from app component what I want is I want to import something known as router module from from angular router there we are and now what I want to do is since it's a module remember module goes into imports so I want to do an import of router module but with this import I want to define how my routes should look like so I'm going to say for root and you can see the definition here it accepts the first parameter as an array of routes so you can just import this route array as well to add TypeScript validation and all that stuff but as I talked about that in the first video that is not really necessary for smaller applications right so we can just safely omit that okay so in this array of routes what we have is a property in this object of path and a property of component now what you need to remember while writing these objects is that um, these paths the more generic the paths which are uh, which can be matched to a lot of URLs should be placed way too lower than the ones which are exact for example for example let me show you this path of blank would match um, pretty much anything not very really anything I believe but it matches a lot of stuff right so I'm, I'm gonna show you that just wait a minute um, let's just say component is this is home component so yeah what I was talking about was that suppose that your application has um, local host slash path 1 slash path 2 then your application also handles local host slash path 1 so if you placed this in a higher priority to this then what would happen is that when user visits this path, the component for this would render because Angular runs, Angular's router runs on a first serve strategy. So as you know, the elements in, a, in an array are preserved. So it starts looking from the first element. It keeps looking unless it's, it found the match. Once it founds a path match, it would render that component into an HTML tag known as a router outlet. Now let me just clarify that for you really quick let me just write one more rule here and we'll see what i'm talking about here so i'm going to write a path of data and the component that should render when that happens is data component and we all have everything in place because of angular cli so there we go now what's happening here and before i tell you one last thing inside app component.html there we have router outlet as the tag all right now one final thing one final one final thing is that inside our data component um, 
actually, I guess, I believe I removed the uh, HTML here. Let me just control Z a little and we should be able to get HTML back. All right. So here goes my HTML for data component and uh, router outlet. You're back. And what we need to do is one last thing is we need to get this thing as well. So inside my ng on in it, this is my service. Then what we have is we have injected the service. Then finally, we will just make it available to our component by injecting it. And obviously we just need a web cause over here. And this would be one path down. All right, we are good to go. Okay, so let me just quickly go over through what we have done so far. Stay with me. We imported the router module. We imported that into our app through the imports array. We defined our routes for this application. So this path data, what this means is localhost 4200 slash delta. Whenever that hits, it would render the component we specify into something known as this router outlet tag, right? So this router outlet would display components which this router module tells it to, right? So once it's data, it matches, it finds component, it stops. If this, this is not data, we go further down in the array, we find a blank path, which is our home page, and we get our home component here. All right, so we need to do a couple of things more to this home component as well. And that is home works, and we can write a router link, which is just Angular's so way of telling that this is not an external link, this is a special link, which should not be reloaded. And I'm gonna just say, uh, go to data page. All right, so that was quite some work and now we are ready for showtime. You can see that we get homeworks and go to data page link. When I click on this, you can see that our data gets loaded. Now, if we see this one more time, what you would observe is that at this point in our application, the file.php file is not loaded. Now the reason file.php is not loaded, obviously because Angular is not loading all of your components at once, inside this router module so when i go to this data page you can see that this file.php file was loaded so you can see that we can display our data and if i go to data directly then also this thing works now because under the hood webpack development server just transfers all the requests to angular script but that will not happen obviously when you deploy it in a production app there are different ways to do that we'll come to that very later on when we are pushing this application to actual servers so anyways, that was a very basic route setup. And what we can do is that whatever you write here, I hope you get my point. This will always display because this is independent of router outlet, right? So it's always going to display. Now you can see that this will always display, will always display. Now the reason for that is because again, as I told you that this is not a part of your router. Um, router outlet so this would always display we can just add a backlink to this so that it makes kind of more sense so we, what we can do is instead of ahref we're gonna say a router link go back hit save reload go to data page go back go to data page go back now you can see that angular is not caching these requests right so it, this is actually could and should be the default feature because your data might change in between so angular does not want to show old data to users so go back go to data page and that's that's how it works so yeah that was pretty much it how basic routing works how you basically create how you basically even create routing and get stuff from um, a local server in our case and that is all for this video Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next video. And one more thing, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.